So my name is Bren Smith. I'm executive director of Green Wave. I was born and raised in Newfoundland, Canada, and I dropped out of high school when I was 14 and headed out to sea. I fished the globe. It was at the height of industrial fishing. It was clear to us that it wasn't sustainable, so I went on this search for sustainability. So I'm a 3D ocean farmer. And what you should do is imagine an underwater garden. We've got floating long lines, and from there we grow our mussels, our scallops, and our seaweeds. And then below that we've got cages where we have our oysters and clams. Our crops require zero inputs to grow. So that means no fresh water, no fertilizer, no feed. Growing cattle and pigs on land is incredibly resource intense. It takes water, tons of feed. But what we're farming requires so few resources. We don't have to feed our sea vegetables. We don't have to feed our shellfish. They're just eating what's in the water, filtering what's in the water. And so using this entire vertical column, we're able to grow huge amounts of food in small areas. So all along our coastlines, we can have these little small farms dotting the coastline and producing incredible amounts of food but it's not going to ruin our oceans. Once you get over the embarrassment of growing vegetables, it's beautiful stuff. You know, like, I'm actually proud of this. The chefs are loving this whole leaf. We love kelp because of how fast it grows and what season we're able to grow it in. We found kelp. Kelp spores start appearing in around September, and you'll see that in the leaves, you'll see these chocolate stripes. And that means the kelp is reproductive. So we go out and get a two or three pieces. We take those pieces of kelp with the sporous tissue, and we put it into the tanks with a piece of PVC, like a plastic pipe, and there's string wrapped around that piece of plastic pipe. And the spores, the little kelp spores, attach to that string. And then by November, they're big enough for us to put them out on the farm. The first three months, it just grows little by little. And then as soon as you hit January, it starts growing so, 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 so fast. And it'll be the huge 15-foot leaves by the time we harvest. One of our most popular dishes is kelp noodles. We're making a kelp fra diablo. This is what you can do at home if you're like me and you don't know how to cook. Oh! <laughs> it's all right, I got a red shirt on. Imagine like a six foot noodle that's bright green, and then we serve it not as seafood, but as a vegetable. I mean, it's delicious and it's not what you think in terms of seafood. These ocean plants are vegetables. And so when we approach them like that, that's where the seafood plate becomes delicious. Oh, it's yummy. Yeah, really mm, good. Got a long noodle there, huh? <laughs> We want to set into the wind from here out, I think. This goes to the anchor line, uh -huh. that goes to the kelp line. Beautiful. So the crops we grow are these agents of sustainability. Our oysters filter up to 50 gallons of water a day, pulling nitrogen out of the water column. And too much nitrogen is one of the causes of the dead zones that are spreading throughout our globe. Our kelp soaks up five times more carbon than land-based plants. We're climate farmers, helping restore our seas, mitigate climate change, while also growing good, delicious, beautiful food. So these are our mussel socks. The whole idea is to do polyculture and grow as many different species out on our farms. I love being an ocean farmer. It's such an interesting way to make a living, to have a small business, and really create a future for my kids too. But it's not easy. I'm out there all winter, you know, in 20 degree weather, breaking ice with sledgehammers. I mean, my body is sore at the end of the day and my hands are kind of like the claws of a lobster. Right? But it is something that really drives me. It's why I wake up every morning. I want to die one day on the sea, right? I want to sink with my boat and that'll be success because I came at this uh, 30 years ago asking the question, how do I spend my life on the ocean? How do I spend my life with a boat, feeding people? And that's where I get my meeting.